What's up guys, welcome to another episode. So tonight's episode is gonna be a little different. I kinda wanna start something new and I wanna do a series like where I take you guys with me from start to finish and walk you through my process of finding the composition and setting things up in the camera, picking the lenses, picking the compositions, the lighting, all of that stuff, and then getting the shot and then going into post and showing you as I edit for the first time, what I'm thinking and how I'm editing. And hopefully this will just kind of help the creative process so you guys can see not only what I'm doing, but maybe it'll inspire you or something. And uh, sorry, I'm listening for mountain lions because we are out here, we're out here <laughs> and they're out here and they know that we're out here, but we don't know that they're out here, but they know. I'm just listening. Not like you would hear a mountain lion anyways, because they're like the most stealthy creature on the planet. Anyways, I digress. So what I want to do is I have an idea for a shot. I have my camera. So you see behind me, uh, you can probably see there's a bench there. And that's probably the only thing you can see right now. I'm shooting at like 12,800 ISO at... <laughs> so as camera lady just pointed out so now you can probably see the bench there's a bench behind me and what you can't see that I know is there that you don't know yet is an incredible lookout of the Hilo National Forest and a crap ton of stars there's not a cloud in the sky so this is what I'm thinking we have this really cool vista we have all of these stars uh, no Milky Way yet that's actually over there and that's gonna be for another episode uh, but for right now, I figure we could kind of get a cool adventure type landscape photo. I'm going to put Brittany in the shot on this bench and light her up. So what I'm thinking is I'm probably going to use one of these guys, uh, which is my loom cube. So loom cube light. Yeah, it flashes. Cool stuff. So I'm probably going to light her up. I'm going to pose her. But before we get her in the shot, I'm gonna, let's go through. I got a 5D Mark IV here, and I threw on my Rokinon 14 millimeter F2.8, and I'm gonna kinda get the background how I want it, and then once I get the composition and the exposure for the background good to go, then I'm gonna put Brittany in there and start lighting her. I'm gonna find my composition first, and what I'm looking for is kind of a lower angle down here so that uh, we've got the 14 mil on, so that's going to really exaggerate things. And I don't, I want this probably to be on my lower third, and then the horizon is probably going to be about halfway, and then the rest of the way is stars. Give it a, a flash, it there you go. Okay, so first composition, not looking that great. Uh, I don't like this little plant down here behind me, so I think I'm gonna keep moving this around until I'm happy. I like where the bench is at. Now it's just gonna be, the trick is gonna be balancing this light that's lighting up the bench to uh, the background so that we're not overexposing it. I've got it 15 seconds at 6400 ISO and I'll probably change that a little bit and ch switch it to like 25 seconds and drop the ISO down to 3200 but that's what I'm at right now f2.8 and what you got to do with the lights when you're lighting stuff like this is you got to do it like real quick and you got to piddle with you got to take a few shots to, to check the amount of light that's hitting your subject in this foreground so that you don't blow it out and it'll look like this because this shot right here was uh, 15 seconds 6400 ISO and Brittany shine the light on the subject for like two seconds and that was clearly too long okay so I found my composition decided to do a vertical because I didn't like that stupid bush there so I'm at uh, f 2.8 25 seconds 14 millimeters ISO 3200 and it's looking like less than a second is gonna be needed to flash so here's the basic composition so now what we need to do is get Brittany in there and figure out if I'm going to light her from back here or if I'm going to silhouette light her. So we're going to try a couple of those and see what works. I like 
like your legs sticking out like that so we can tell that you're human form and not some sort of blanket blob creature. <laughs> okay, so let's give that a go, shall we? Am I shining the light up? Or... Yes, shine it straight up. Straight up? Yeah. There? Is it on your head? No. Do you want it on my head? Yeah, because I still want to be able to see your head. Okay. See, this is what it really yes. looks like when we're doing astro stuff in the middle of the night. You can't see anything, you just hear a bunch of weird talking. Okay, you might have to read this Is it on your head? Yes. Okay, I see you now. <laughs> Is the blankie fine? Yeah, it's all right. Let's see what it looks like. All right, you ready? Ready. Oh, uh, when I tell you to cover the light. Does well, no, just, just leave it, we'll see what happens. Just leave it. Okay. Shit, that was too long. <laughs> Oh, 25 seconds of darkness. It's probably more awkward for you guys than it is for me. Do y'all hear those crickets? Now, do the same thing, but with one of your legs down. I just switched it. Okay. Oh, that's, that's better. All right, you ready? Ready. And we're staying still. This is the part when we're taking the shot and the lights are off and we're being quiet that the mountain lion is going to eat Brittany. All right, I know this is weird the way I have to hold my light so I can see you guys. Uh, well, so you can see me because I can't see anything. So here's the initial setup with Brittany. 25 seconds, ISO 3200, F2.8, 14 mil. Okay, so I decided that she looked better sitting up, I think. So I think we're done here. Uh, Brittany's definitely done here because she's freezing. So we're gonna head back and get some tea and I will see you in the studio. All right. Okay, so it's the next morning. I got my tea. I just put the, I just barely put the images on the computer right now. I haven't even looked at them yet. So let's go ahead and jump in there and I'll walk you guys through my thoughts and show you how I'm gonna edit this thing. All right, so let's take a look at some of these images. So I'm not gonna go over all of the crappy ones. I'm just gonna go straight to the good ones and we'll see how it's looking. So let's start with this one. So right off the bat, you can probably tell a couple of things. The white balance is off and the exposure in the foreground is way too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. I'm just gonna come in here with a brush and so I'm just gonna drop the exposure just a little bit here. I think that's a little more subtle. Now I'm just gonna reduce the white balance a little bit. Not too much though. What I am gonna do, so I just reduced it overall right here for globally, but now I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna paint in a cooler white balance so that the sky is a little bluer. And I'm just gonna look at my mask and then I'm gonna erase the part of the mask because I had a high feather that's over my subject. Okay, I'm happy with that now. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of clarity to the global image. I'm gonna bring up the texture and then now I'm going to paint in a new mask and just bring up the highlights and the whites. And that's just going to help these stars pop a little bit more without introducing too much noise in the dark areas. And just a little bit of a gradient for exposure. So now let's take a look at a before and after. So there we go. It's looking a little better. I'm gonna bring up the vibrance just a bit. And then I'll take the noise down just a little bit. All right, I think that's good. All right, so now I'm just gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna take away, fix some of these clouds. I don't want those two little clouds in there. All right, that's better. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put a pause on this image because I have a couple of other images that I think are probably better. Yeah, I think I like this one better. I'm not sure how I like how the light came out on her head, but whatever. So I'm gonna do kind of the same stuff to this one. All the usual suspects. All right, I think that's good. All right, so I'm gonna put a pause on this one too, and I'm gonna check one last one. So I saw this composition after I finished up the video out there, and I didn't wanna refilm anything, but uh, I wanna go ahead and see if this image is gonna work or not. that was in camera raw and um, not really too sure what I want to do this in Photoshop other than I'll probably crop it to a 4x5 and bring some of this out a little more. I'm still not sure how I feel about the color palette of these rocks but that was a pretty tricky situation to deal with. I think it looks all right though. I think maybe I'll try to add a little bit of light in there or exaggerate that light I mean. So that's subtle but effective, I think. I think the last thing I wanna do is a little bit of dodge and burn. I'm gonna kinda of try to make a little more texture here. Since that light was shining straight on, that really kills the shadows and the shadows are what give you detail. All right, I think maybe that's a little bit better. Okay, well, there's the images. Those are the three that I came away with. The two that you saw me edit actually in the field and then the one uh, that I shot afterwards. I don't think any of those are award-winning images. They're not portfolio images. I probably won't put them. I may share one of them on my Instagram, but I do think that I came away with a good spot and a good composition and definitely some ideas to kick around for uh, some future photo shoots. So I think that all of those images and those compositions would definitely benefit from either the Milky Way, which unfortunately is on the other side uh, and won't be over there, or at the very least some star trails. So what I may try to do is go out again at some point and do like a time lapse and create the star trails and then put the person in there and blend those. And then I think that'll make for a much more dynamic image or set of images. But anyways, I hope you could get something useful out of watching me in the field and then through the editing process and putting the whole thing together and just kind of see how everything works and hopefully that'll help you guys uh, with your own stuff. If you have any questions about anything I shot, whether it was in the field and the technical stuff for the settings or the editing stuff, let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely answer them. If you haven't already, definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel. I've got new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.